So let's get back to today's market. Chris Payne is with us, financial advisor, Payne Capital Management. Chris, how are you feeling about the market right now? Obviously, we're well off those March 23rd lows. You have extreme pressure on, on oil, at least for the May contract. Your thoughts, where are we going from here? Well, Nicole, that's a really good question. I think that the market is a discounting mechanism for the future. So any bad news that's come out is already priced in. So everything that we're, he that we're hearing now, I think the market's already anticipated. So I know that you have some names that you like. I'm curious to figure out why, what you're using to pick stocks these days, because, you know, it's such a different story for each different sector. What are some of the criteria you use to pick stocks? Well, I mean, let's just take, for example, like Chevron. Uh, oil today, I believe, is down like 60%. If you look at a company like Chevron, you know, again, going back to that whole concept that the, the market is a discounting mechanism for the future, Chevron's only really down about 1% today. The other thing I really look at are dividends. I always like to say that the market pays you to wait, and the way they pay you to wait is they bribe you with dividends. So right now, Chevron is paying about a 6% dividend, which last time I checked is about 600% better than what you can get in cash right now. And the other thing that I like to look at is this, is where are things trading under the overall market? You know, where are things the cheapest? And right now, Chevron, Chevron's a great place to buy because it's trading about 10% below the overall market. Right. So you, you, you're talking about the sell-off that we've seen in some of these energy names and Chevron in particular, you like the dividend. I mean, some companies are actually cutting dividends. Is Chevron a name you're picking up for a long-term hold? And if they change the dividend situation, would you change your choice on this? No, I mean, Chevron has committed to the fact that they are going to do everything they possibly can to maintain their dividend. The other thing that I look at is that when all this, when this situation with the virus starts to dissipate, we're going to start driving again. So I think that oil is going to be in much higher demand. So I think this is really a great long term play. And while we're waiting again, we're getting paid. Let's move to Wells Fargo. I mean, when you look at the banks and you look at everything financial, Wells Fargo is a name that uh, obviously has had a lot of headlines and a lot of uh, scrutiny as they're making their way back. And people are saying, don't write it off yet, right? Like, it, it really is a great company, new leadership. Tell me why you like Wells Fargo in, in the financial area. Well, I, you know, earnings just came out for the banking sector. And I think for the most part, earnings were down about 30 percent for the banking sector overall. Wells Fargo has gotten hit particularly hard, down about 89%. But if you look at the stock today, it's only trading down about 1%. So one, you know, I think it's a really good buy here. If we look at the, the forward PE, it's only trading about 10 times forward earnings. The other thing is, again, another great dividend payer, paying like 7%. So 700% better than what you get in cash. The market, this stock in particular, is paying you to wait. And then again, you know, with rates potentially increasing over a long term, you know, once this whole thing starts to dissipate again, I think that there's going to be great potential here as this is a good long term play. Do you think tech is an area or healthcare is an area where people should be invested now? I mean, I don't know. Are you fully invested or are you keeping on the sidelines waiting for more of a pullback? What's the plan here? I'm always fully invested. I, I always think that, again, I love dividends. Dividends are always paying you to wait. So I don't think there's ever a reason not to be invested for me personally. Uh, with regards to healthcare and the technology sector, I don't really think those are great buys here. I think that they're they're overbought at this point. Uh, I think that with everything that's going on with this pandemic, they've been very popular. Uh, and the conventional wisdom says, hey, they're great buys, but the reality is that they're really overpriced.